I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I'm glad you joined us this week. We have some good things to talk about, and I've got my audio working correctly. That's a good thing, because last week was terrible. Really? Oh, boy. Anyway, we're proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com, if it's tech. It's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon, and I'm glad that you know that, because there's so many good tech podcast shows that you should be watching, not the least of which is Todd Cochran's own Geek News Central. Yes, for all the geeky news that's fit to talk about, Todd will take it up. Of course, so will I, but he has a different perspective. Mine is quite strange. <laughs> anyway, you know, what can I say? So, you tune in every week to hear the latest, greatest, cool things from the tech world, and we're going to talk about those. Before we do, though, let me thank a sponsor that we've had before on the netcast, and that's Citrix Systems. But this week, we're talking about one of their great products called GoToAssist. Now, if you're like me, you know, not too many people are like me, but that's okay. Anyway, it's the truth. Uh, if you're a geek, and you're kind of the tech support for your family and friends, don't you love that? You know, it's like the t-shirt that says, no, I won't fix your computer. <laughs> Can get that from Think Geek. But at any rate, sometimes you do have to fix their computer. And when you do, it's good to have a tool to remotely connect to their PC. Well, guess what? GoToAssist is just that tool. And it's an excellent tool to do it. And if you will take advantage of this special offer, Right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon, you can sign up for GoToAssist free trial for 30 days, absolutely free, no strings attached. All you got to do is use this URL right here. I know it's a funny URL, it's one of those bit.ly URLs, but hey. Anyway, take advantage of this. It is a super offer, 30 days free for GoToAssist. And I really want to thank Citrix Systems for sponsoring the netcast. All right. Well, let's move on to the blog, shall we? The blog, of course, is drbill.cc. As you know, CC stands for Computer Curmudgeon. What else would it stand for? Anyway, let's go to the blog. The blog this week, we're talking about something that I put as a headline. Okay, sorry, but this is yucky. <laughs> and indeed it is, in my opinion. You know, I like Jello. You, you might think that was a random statement, and I certainly make random statements, but it actually ties into this particular story. Anyway, I like Jell-O. I like the way it tastes. I like the way it feels in my mouth. However, I really don't want to know where it comes from. <laughs> just, just say in between you and me, I really don't know, and I don't care. Well... That's why this story caught me off guard. Apparently, some scientists have come up with an approach to producing human-derived gelatin in large enough quantities to be commercially viable replacement for animal-based gelatins. Now again, I don't want to know what that means. I do know that gelatin is made from pretty much the same things as fingernails and horses' hooves, but that's as far as I want to think about it. Okay? Anyway, that's why gelatin is good for your fingernails, actually, from a purely health perspective. But the idea of getting your gelatin from humans 
as the Ferengi might say. I just don't know. The person who wrote this particular article that I linked to said, is this some strange indirect form of cannibalism? I kind of think maybe so. So hopefully <laughs> if they ever do really commercially develop this, they will label it on the Jello. I can just see the little Jello gelatin thingies, you know, that you open the top, and there's a sign on it that says Jello from Humans. <laughs> Arg. <laughs> so I really don't want to know about it. Okay. Let's look at the next article. That, that's beginning to really kind of gross me out. The next article, Geek Website of the Week, Join.me. Join.me is a website that is produced by LogMeIn.com, the f folks from LogMeIn.com, and it is a free tool to take over somebody's computer. You know, we were just talking about go to assist, which is a professional tool to do this. This is another means by which one might take over a computer, and that is join.me. That's a website, you know, the .me extension. And it's kind of cute, right? Join.me. Kind of neat. Anyway, um, this is a neat site, and I've used it, and I like it. But I will say this, just between you and me. The kind of people who need the assistance that you're offering They're being able to hit this website and download the plugin and get it working and type in the code and do all the things they have to do has proved to be a challenge for some of the people that I work with. So, another good reason to use GoToAssist, I suppose, which is much simpler to use. However, it is a cool site, so it's the Geek Website of the Week. I'm, I'm in a little bit of a weird mood, as you can tell. All right, Star Wars, the complete saga. Do, 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 do. I like Star Wars. I'm not as big a Star Wars fan as my son, the Game Master. I'm the big Star Trek fan. Star Trekking across the universe. Never mind. <laughs> It goes back to an old geek culture song that I played on the netcast many years ago. But it's fun. Anyway, the point is Star Wars. Star Wars is cool. I remember when I saw it in a theater in 1977. Yes. And when I got out of the theater, I was so excited, I drove my car like it was one of those X-Wing fighters. And I didn't get caught, thankfully. <laughs> anyway, hey, I was in college. Yes, I was a junior in college at the time. I graduated in 78 from UNCG. So, anyway, the point is it was a fun movie. And at the time, completely blew me away with its effects and its coolness and general geekiness. And, of course, back then there wasn't quite as many geeky things. I mean, if you think pre-Star Wars, what were geeks doing? Mainly they were reading Lord of the Rings and singing Hobbit songs. But anyway, I digress. The point is, Star Wars is cool. Now, here's the thing about Star Wars. As they kept making the movies, and then they went back and made the first three movies to totally out of order, just to confuse everybody, and throw Jar Jar Binks in there just to annoy all the fans. <laughs> anyway, um, the quality of the movie making and the technology advanced between 1977 and whenever they made the last movie in the 2000s. And so, that is noticeable. So they keep going back and tweaking and cleaning and doing enhancements and things of that nature. And now they're going to be releasing the Star Wars Saga in Blu-ray. Now I've heard good things about this. The guy that wrote this article says specifically, the piece de resistance, however, came with the clip from Star Wars Episode 
or A New Hope. I always have to look at it because it's a Roman numeral. I have to translate. Anyway, A New Hope, taken from the opening sequence of the special edition version of the movie where the Star Destroyer engulfs Princess Leia's starship. The moment when you first see C-3PO in full 1080p is stunning. His golden shell gleams with such fine detail and shine that you'd swear the movie was made this year rather than 1977. Dude. So, actually the movie was probably made in 75, 76 if it was released in 77, but that's just being picky. Anyway, the point is, I want this movie in Blu-ray because I've noticed that Blu-ray is awesome. I finally got a Blu-ray player not too long ago and I've been having fun watching Blu-rayness. Anyway, next item, will Microsoft kill Windows? Um, now, how do I mean that? See, now I've got this neat little picture on the blog here of, and I did it myself with the GIMP. The GIMP, of course, is the free open source Photoshop, and I put that in quotes because it's really its own program, as I'm sure both the Photoshoppers and the GIMP people would agree to, but at any rate, the GIMP is for Graphic Image Manipulation Program. That's what GIMP stands for. It doesn't have anything to do with somebody with a leg that's damaged. Okay. So, the GIMP. I used that and created this, this image here of a tombstone with a Windows logo that says RIP Windows. I must admit that when I made it, I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> so, anyway. The point is that Microsoft intimated, they didn't come right out and say, but they intimated, that their future operating systems would converge. Everybody's talking about convergence. Convergence, convergence. Everybody wants everything to run on the same platform. Well, Windows, Windows, Microsoft intimated that Windows was going to be morphed, retired, something along those lines, and that eventually we would have an operating system that would run on your PC, It'd run on the Xbox, it'd run on the Windows Phone. Basically every Windows or Microsoft platform, I keep interchanging Microsoft and Windows, it must be a Freudian thing. Anyway, so the idea is, is that eventually if you could imagine, you could play an Xbox game on your PC because it'd be the same operating system. That strikes me as interesting and a little bit odd. And if you tried to play the game on your phone, you'd probably complain about the graphics and the size of the screen. Just saying. So except for these physical limitations, they might converge and have their own operating system, which might mean the death of Windows. Then again, Windows 8 might mean the death of Windows. <laughs> Just saying. We'll see. Anyway, so that's what the story is about, and I encourage you to go read it. Click on the link there, Microsoft might kill Windows brand in favor of a super OS. Super OS. Anyway, weird. But like I said, I'm kind of in a bit of a weird mood. So, you know, whoa! Yes, that's, that drum roll that just keeps doing that is reminding me that it's time for Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is Good Sync. Good Sync. Now, Good Sync is a tool. Now, here's the thing about this particular product, program, thing. Okay, Geek Software of the Week is that you have a free version that you can download and use, which is limited. Then you can purchase the full version, which is unlimited. Okay, so. I like free for Geek Software of the Weeks, and the free version is free. Free version is free. That's kind of like cute kitties are cute. You know, the old internet meme? Never mind. Anyway, the thing about it is Good Sync is a file synchronizer. You kept thinking, will he ever get around to telling us what it is? Yes, it's a file synchronizer. 
and you can set it up to be much like Dropbox, which I love Dropbox. I'm a big Dropbox fan. I use it all the time. And the idea of Dropbox is, is I can have a folder, and this is true of GoodSync as well, I can have a folder and I can synchronize it on all the computers that I'm using so that if I dry, drag and drop something into that directory, it's going to be on all my computers, which is really handy, which is why I like Dropbox. Okay, so imagine though with GoodSync being able to set up GoodSync on your computers, point it to an FTP server, SFTP, S standing for secure, secure FTP server, and then synchronizing among all your other computers. Now, by doing that, you could have a server out there, particularly if you're a super geek like me, you could have a server out there with tons of disk space and be able to have a huge repository of stuff out there in the cloud. You know, we like the cloudiness. Yes. Well, some days in the summer we like the sunshine, but the cloudiness is good sometimes too. Particularly if it gets too hot and then you have to kind of be cloudy to get cooled off. Okay, I kind of really got off topic, didn't I? I'm thinking about later this afternoon when I plan to go swimming. Aha! I would say join me, but you don't know where I'm going or how to get there, and some of you are in France or England or Australia or somewhere else. And you probably wouldn't be able to get here anyway, in a timely fashion. So I'll just float around and think about you, you know, in a nice way. So I'll be thinking good thoughts projected at you in, in your general direction. Okay? You do the same for me. It keeps the karma flowing, you know what I mean? Okay. Why I'm really getting weird. Anyway, the point is good sync is cool. It is. Here's what they say about themselves. An easy and reliable file backup and file synchronization software. It automatically analyzes, synchronizes, and backs up your emails, precious family photos, music, contacts, financial documents, and other important files locally, between desktops, laptops, server, and external drives, and Windows mobile devices, as well as remotely, through FTP, SFTP, secure, which you should use, WebDAV, and more. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll have complete peace of mind with GoodSync. Automatically back up all your critical files to ensure you'll never lose them. Easily synchronize your files between multiple computers and devices. Completely portable with GoodSync to go for USB flash and portable hard drives. So it actually will install in such a way that you could sync it to your USB stick or USB based hard drive. So you can sync it everywhere. Pretty cool stuff. So I like that. Now, let's talk a little bit about last week. <laughs> last week as you heard, the audio was terrible. Terrible. I almost didn't release the netcast, but I just couldn't bring myself to doing it over. You know, sometimes when you are as off the wall and random as I am, it just doesn't happen again. It's the moment. It's capturing the weirdness all at that one moment. And so I had to just make allowances and say, I'm sorry about the audio. So again, I apologize that I'm sorry about the audio for last week's netcast, but this week it's better. Yes. And so is a great many other things. And I've done some more fixing up here in my office. You might notice uh, the uh, certificates and such over here in the corner. You know, I've got my, my doctorates. Yes, I have two of them. I know I'm an overachiever. Anyway, I've got them hanging over here. And I've got my uh, certified natural health professional and my uh, master web administrator. Yes. Now I am the master. <laughs> I like that. Anyway, the, the game master always says, you're only a master of evil, Darth. <laughs> He's got to complete the scene, you know. It's just stuck in his head otherwise. Anyway, so, but what I was going to say about last week is last week we also tried 
Our first live netcast. That didn't go so well either. So that's why last week was called Dr. Bill's Bad Tech Day. I had problems with the live program, and the pro problems with the live program led to the problems with the regular netcast because I was tweaking stuff and I didn't untweak before I did the program. Always untweak. Should make that into a t shirt. Anyway, so how are we doing for time? We're doing okay, but we're just about done. So. I'll quit here. Anyway, remember until next time that the doctor is out of here.